there. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate. And today we're taking a look at The Golden Ticket Game by Buffalo Games and Puzzles. If you're a fan of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, then you're going to love The Golden Ticket Game, as it takes its place right in the middle of the movie at the beginning when all the kids are searching for a golden ticket into Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. In this game, you are going to be trying to get as many Wonka bars as you possibly can in hopes that inside of one of them is a golden ticket. Let's take a look at it down below and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on this. All right, I've got the golden ticket game on the table here. Let me show you all the components and how this game works. And as you would have guessed, this is a game that takes place in the world of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, or perhaps Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Oh, uh, or maybe the, the book, too. Whichever you prefer, this is going to have you play as one of the uh, famous characters from the world of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And you are going to be searching for a uh, Wonka bar that is going to have a golden ticket in it. And so you can see here what the golden tickets look like. They are very shiny. You can see my reflection in them. Uh, and so you are going to be looking for this. And it says there, and this is kind of hard to read if you are trying to do that at home. Greetings to you, the lucky finder of the golden ticket from Mr. Willy Wonka. And I'm not going to read to you the rest of it. But you are trying to search and find one of those tickets so that you can enter in Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Now on uh, the game here, you have nine different tiles that you are going to be moving about, taking the actions on the tiles in hopes of gaining money, gaining cards, but ultimately gaining Wonka bars because the more Wonka bars you gain, the better the odds that you will win at the end of the game. Now, uh, everybody is going to play as one of the famous characters, such as Charlie Bucket, Violet Beauregard, Augustus Gloop, Mike TV, and Veruca Salt. Now, all the players are going to have a special ability, an allowance, and hand refill. And so your special ability is going to be something special that only you can do throughout the course of the game. Your allowance is how much money you start the game with, and how much money you get when you take the classroom action. And not everyone's allowances are gonna be the same as Veruca's is higher than everyone else because obviously she was the uh, rich girl in the movie uh, and she had more money than anyone else. Uh, but because her money is such higher, her special ability is not as great as some other characters. As you can see, Mike TV lets you uh, get extra out, uh, actions whenever you play rowdy cards, which are a special type of action. And uh, as you would have guessed, Charlie Bucket's allowance is only $3 because he was uh, very poor in the movie. And uh, his special ability is, is a lot better. Whenever you sweep cards, which we'll come back to what that means here, you get to move. And uh, you w definitely want to move about the board as much as you can in this game. Now, on your turn, you are going to be picking two of these three actions. You are going to play a card discard a card to move, or refill your hand back up to four cards. So let's cover what each of these actions are going to be. You can play a card, and cards are going to let you do certain things as listed on the card, which generally are going to get you extra Wonka bars, extra cards, extra money, or movement. Those are generally the things you're going to do. Some of the cards will let you do some take of that to the other players at the table. Now, all the cards are going to be divvied up into three different types. You have mystery cards, you have sweet cards, and you are going to have rowdy cards. Now, you heard me say rowdy cards earlier when talking about Mike TV, and the rowdy cards generally are going to be cards that let you do take that to the other players and uh, just to be rowdy for instance. Now, when you play a card, you are going to place it down below your player board, and that is because at uh, certain locations on the board, you are going to be able to sweep cards, and so you're going to divvy up the different types of cards into separate columns here, and so uh, once I play these cards, 
If I were to play all four of them, I would have one mystery card and three sweet cards. And uh, if I had any rowdy cards, I would keep them in a separate column here underneath my player board. And when I come to certain locations, such as the TV shop, if I were to go there at any point in the game, I could do this action for free, which says sweep three sweet cards, then gain two Wonka bars. And so I would have to have had three sweet cards that I've played at some point earlier in the game to be able to sweep them, which simply means to uh, discard them to the discard pile here. And now I could gain two Wonka bars. And I do want to point out real quick while we're looking at these tiles, these tiles are double-sided. There is a side B that has a different action on them. So that can help with replayability. You can play with uh, some of the tiles on side B, some of the tiles on side A. Now that's playing a card. The other thing you could do is you could discard a card to move one space. And I would simply just discard a card from my hand, not below my player board to the discard pile, and then I could move my character either up, down, left, or right. I could not go diagonal. And when I go to that space, I can immediately take advantage of the location action. This does not cost an action. It is a free thing that I can do. So I would gain $4 and put that in my wallet right here. If I ever end my turn on the same space as Willy Wonka, now I have to end my turn there, I get a free Wonka bar because Willy Wonka is a very generous guy and he gives me a Wonka bar for free. And then you roll this six-sided die and it will tell you where you place him. And the top six tiles, as you can see, they all have numbers on them. That's where Wonka is going to stay. He will only ever visit these six tiles. He'll never go down here to the three bottom tiles. The last thing you might do on your turn is to refill your hand up to four cards, as that is your hand refill size. At different points in the game, you may have more than four cards. At the beginning of the game, everyone's going to get six cards dealt to them. The first player is going to discard two. Everyone else will discard one. And uh, you may have more than four cards at different points throughout the course of the game. The game is immediately going to end when all the Wonka bars have been claimed. And real quick, let me just show you the uh, box here. There are a lot of Wonka bars and they all fit nicely inside the box. And you can see here there's an insert even for the different characters too. Uh, but that's how many Wonka bars you have. And uh, you, you are going to open your Wonka bars up one at a time to see if you have a golden ticket. And on one side, you're going to have chocolate, bars of chocolate. So that's really cool because it looks like real chocolate. On the back side is a hollowed out space for a golden ticket to fit if it was placed in there at the beginning of the game. If you don't have a golden ticket, then you move on to your next bar. And hopefully you have one because if you do, you are a winner. If you don't, you didn't win this time. Better luck next time. And that is how you play the golden ticket game. Let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this one. And we're back. And now we're going to share our thoughts on the golden ticket game. And you can see there is uh, some gameplay footage here with Sam and I and some of our kids. Uh, Sam, uh, this has got an interesting table presence. We've got these chocolate Wonka bars that actually look like real chocolate bars that you unwrap to see if there's a golden ticket. Uh, first thoughts when you see it on the table, what, what crosses your mind? Well, I know the kids were really excited to play it. They immediately um, grasped on to these, or uh, they did think it was real chocolate, so <laughs> a little disappointing, but um, I mean, it, it's exciting you know to think that there's so many um chocolate bars and you get some and some have a golden ticket in it and the kids really understood that pretty quickly what the goal was going to be yeah yeah this is definitely a game that uh, takes very little explaining as far as what the concept is and what you're trying to do especially if you've seen the movie if you've seen the movie then you immediately go into the idea of this game because the, the theme and the mechanics work so well. They yeah. work hand in hand in this game. Uh, Sam, as a non-gamer, as you were approaching this and trying to figure out the rules and the strategy, uh, what were some of the thoughts that you had on as far as that goes? I mean, it's, it was pretty easy to understand. Um, you have money and you have chocolate and those are kind of the things that you use to um, but, I mean, you use the money to do most of your things, and there's some spaces that get you chocolate bars, and you can use your money to buy chocolate bars. Um, and then you have your cards. I think the most difficult, and I use that very 
you know, light, lightly. lightly. The most difficult part was the playing cards that you had. Mm-hmm. Um, not so much for me and Lance, more so for our kids because they're not proficient readers yet. And so just figuring out what each one did. Um, but they understood the concept very easily. So besides helping them to read, Mm -hmm. everyone seemed to get it. Yeah, the box says ages 10 and up, and I think I would probably agree with that mostly. Probably just because of reading. So if you have an early reader, it may be younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but as far as maybe uh, gaming with adults or teenagers and maybe them being non-gamers, I think that this is an easy concept. And the strategy here is not so so thick that they wouldn't they wouldn't do well that they would probably do well in this wouldn't you agree with that yeah for sure yeah now let's talk about it in terms of fun because oftentimes the case is when you're dealing with a light strategic game that is easily understood that the the fun factor might not always be so high because it's easy to figure out and easy to kind of master if you will uh, is that the case with this game? Do you feel like the the fun in this is short lived, or is it one that you want to keep coming back to? Um, I think you want you like the idea of getting that golden ticket. So if you don't get it, you want to come back and play it again. So I do think there's some replayability in that aspect, definitely for kids. Yeah. Um, as far as adults, you know, I could probably play this game one or two times and, and be good, but it, it's a good family game for sure. It's one that you can definitely bring back to the table. 20 to 30 minutes is definitely a good amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, and the kids are going to want to continue to play it. Um, but as far as adults go or definitely gamers go, you know, it could be hit or miss. Yeah, I think I would agree with that as a gamer. Um, just talking about the gameplay mechanics with this game. It is very luck based. I mean, the whole idea of the game is to get as many go- uh, Wonka bars as you possibly can in hopes that the odds are in your favor yeah. at the end of the game that but one of them has get, a golden ticket. You could get triple the right. amount of bars as everybody else and still not get a golden ticket. So it really doesn't matter how good yeah. your strategy is. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same thing. I, I could get 75% of the Wonka bars. You could get 25% and you and have the golden ticket. Yeah. And it's like, well, you weren't, you didn't play the game better than yeah. me. In fact, you played the game worse than me and yet you still won. Yeah. Um, that could be a factor with this game that a lot of people aren't going to like, especially gamers. Uh, that it is very much luck dependent. Now that being the case, I would have to say this isn't just a a crapshoot with this game. This isn't just let's roll some dice and see who rolls higher. There is strategy in how do you go about getting as many Wonka bars as you possibly can? How do you maximize every turn? How do you be efficient with everything that you have? And so there is gameplay in that. I would say that's not very deep as far as how do you figure those things out. Yeah. But it is fun. And as I've mentioned already, there is a lot of theme with this game. And if you are a fan of the movies or the book even... It's enjoyable. It is enjoyable. It's nostalgic. It will bring you back to that movie and it will put you in the movie. You will really get the sense that you're one of those kids trying to find a golden ticket. Yeah. That's what this game is yeah. all about. And if that was what they were aiming for, they, they hit the bullseye, in my opinion. They, yeah. they, they couldn't have done any better with this game, honestly. So if you're looking for a very deep strategic game... It's not it. This isn't it. If you're looking for that game that is thematic and hits the nail on the head as far as combining the mechanics, getting you in the feel of being Willy, in, in the Willy Wonka universe, let's say... This game is awesome. Yeah. It's perfect for that. So let's get into pros and cons real quick on this game, Sam. Uh, you being a non-gamer, you look at this a little differently than us gamers probably do. And so as far as it goes for you, what are the things you like about the Golden Ticket game? Uh, I mean, I love how, I really liked how much my kids liked it. I liked, uh, it's a great family game. It's a yep. great game for kids. Yep. It's, it's easy setup fairly easy to understand. It's pretty quick. So all of those things are huge marks in my book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Anything that you're not too keen on? I mean, I think what you said, like it really doesn't matter how well you play. It it is luck at the end. But at the same time, that that gives our four-year-old a fighting chance. (laughs) So, you know, there's pros and cons to that con. (laughs) Yep. 
And uh, just from a gamer aspect, I do want to throw it out there that the first time you play this game, uh, you, you may actually not want to play it the first time you open the box because the putting this game together yeah. is a mountain to climb, let me tell you. There are 60 chocolate bars that you have to put together. And the first time I play this, I play with a group of gamers. And we all tried to do this together, and it was pretty infuriating know, having to the fold game. the boxes and put the chocolate bars in the boxes and it and it kind of tainted uh, some of the gamers views on this game i will say so uh, make sure to put this game together before you try yeah. to sit down with everyone and play it for the first time so all right let's get into scale of one to ten love to hate what do you give this one sam um i'd give it probably a 7.5 7.5 that's a solid score yeah. i mean i'd probably put it on a if we could differentiate between games and family games yeah it was definitely in the family game category and it's one that we would play often as a family just man yeah. lance probably not <laughs> yeah i would i would agree with that i do almost want to give this game two different scores one very high score for terms of what can we do as a family what is going to be something that's going to get everybody at the table because yeah. even our three-year-old could kind of grasp what he was wanting what, yeah. what the idea of this game is um and so for that i would give this game very high marks but in terms of just games in general yeah. overall i would probably give this game about a seven uh, a solid seven maybe right just below seven six point nine seven somewhere in that ballpark because uh, it is just, it's luck dependent. Yeah. So uh, that's where we hit on the golden ticket game. Uh, go check it out. I know right now it's currently in Target, but it'll soon be available elsewhere. And it is from Buffalo Games and Puzzles. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.